The human senses are important, especially vision. And we can understand the human eye a little better if we have a look at a fairly recent invention, the camera. It's only been with us about 150 years. And all cameras consist basically of a black box with a lens at one end and film at the other. Have a look at this camera. I can remove the lens and we can look at its parts. Now, one part is that bit that's moving, opening and closing. It's called the iris diaphragm and it controls the amount of light getting into the camera. Then there's the lens itself. Actually, in this camera, it consists of about six separate lenses. It's a compound lens. Then there's the film. If I put the lens back and open the back of the camera, you can see that in place of the film, I've put a little piece of plastic cut from a shopping bag. And you'll be able to see on that what the film normally sees. Well, there's the image. It's in full color, but it's upside down. And the same is true of all cameras, an upside down image on the film. So a camera has three main parts, and so does the human eye. Now, the coloured part at the front of the eye is the iris, and that controls the amount of light getting into the eye, like the iris diaphragm in the camera. If we take the model apart, here's the retina, a bit like the film. It's there that the image forms. Light comes through this window at the front, through the lens, to form the image, and the window itself is called the cornea. Because it's curved and clear, it acts as a second lens, and it's a very important part of the eye. Now, because it's at the front of the eye, the cornea can become damaged or diseased. But in a surgery such as this one, it's possible to replace a cornea. You can take away the old cornea, put in a new one. But where would you find a new cornea? That's my driver's license folder, which contains not only the license, but my donor card. Not long ago, if part of you failed, that was just tough. And if it was a part necessary for life, like the heart or the lungs or the liver or kidneys, as your organ died, you died too. But no longer. Medical science is now very good at transplanting organs from donors to recipients and allowing the recipient to get on with life. Part of the body that transplants better than most is the cornea of the eye because it doesn't receive a direct blood supply and because of that it's not rejected as easily as heart and liver and kidneys. And this is the eye bank where eyes are removed and corneas are removed from the eyes. They're stored in an ordinary fridge ready for transplanting and if I take one out, you can see that each one is contained in its own little capsule where it's bathed in a sterilant that keeps it germ-free and also a nutrient that keeps the tissue alive. And you can see a cornea there, ready for transplanting. And this is where the corneal transplant takes place. We're in one of the operating theatres at Flinders Medical Centre with Professor Doug Costa. Doug is acting not only as surgeon, but also as cameraman and director. He's using a microscope camera, a micro cam, so that we can see what he can see through the microscope. And he's controlling that camera with a foot switch, which enables him to focus and zoom. Most corneal transplants are carried out because the cornea has developed a pointy shape, making it difficult to focus. Temporary stitches are placed around the outside of the cornea to get everything organized. All the instruments are the size of a pen, and the surgeon uses them as if writing, with hand resting on the patient's forehead. The old cornea is cut away with a tiny knife with a diamond blade, worth more than $3,000. This diamond blade is about the size of a pencil point, and so are the blades of the curved scissors, which are used in the final stages of removing the old cornea. Since opening a few years ago, the eye bank here at Flinders Medical Centre has provided more than 1,700 eyes for corneal transplants. The new cornea is referred to as the donor button, and it fits exactly into the hole made by removing the old cornea. Thread much finer than a human hair is used to fix the transplanted cornea in place, with tiny knots and a continuous zigzag stitch. Those stitches don't scratch the eyelid, and they'll come out in about a year. And with luck and good management, the transplant will last for the rest of the patient's life.